Hello, good evening ladies and gentlemen, welcome along to the National Stadium at Windsor Park here this evening. It's the Harry Cavan Youth Cup Final, it's been Crusaders under 18s and their counterparts from Larne. We'll get you a run through the starting lineups here now, just as the two teams are getting their photos taken, this momentous occasion for them. So for Larne, their goalkeeper today is Zach Robinson, the Jude O'Hara, Jim Simpson, Logan Graham, Callum Cowan, Ross Ferguson, Harrison Knight, Diego McGann, the captain Jack Hastings, Jay Patterson and Bryce Gray. On the bench then tonight they've got Daniel Collett, Ambrose Ajala, Joel Given, Thomas McKinney, Sean Nugent, Ronan O'Hara and Jude Sims. Lauren who of course coached by former midfielder, current Carrick Rangers midfielder Andy Mitchell. And their opponents here tonight from Crusaders then in goal they've got Scott Marshall, Ryan Donnelly, their captains Bradley Maguire, Joshua Ness, William Francie, Bernard Nsaya, Jonathan James, Matthew Beatty, Carter Bond, Rio Mullen and Cole McKenley. Then the subs tonight for Crusaders on the bench, they've got Matthew Boyle, Oscar McKenna, Connor Cunningham, Matthew McWilliams, Leon Barr, Owen Conlon and Aurele Karapetchai. So we're almost ready here for kickoff. It's turned into a sunny evening at the National Stadium here. Crusaders in their traditional home strip, the red and black stripes, black shorts, black socks and Lauren their chain strip this evening. All blue with the white sleeves. So just getting ourselves ready. This evening our ref is Adam Lawther. He has the ball there. And we're almost ready to get ourselves underway. Crusaders, I mentioned there, their coach, their head coach, Stephen McFerrin tonight. But some legendary club names, very recognisable names also on their bench tonight, including next season manager of the senior team, Declan Cadell, club legend striker Jordan Owens and also a former club legend, Davy Rainey, involved in the coaching staff as well. So you can see there for us, that's the referee. Just checking, watch checking everything's in order. A good crowd in this evening there, you can see in the south stand, just as you're looking at the left, that's the Crusaders fans. To the right there you've got the Lauren fans. Good crowd out to support uh, the future of their first teams, they hope. It's Lauren getting ready to get underway, that's Jack Hastings with the ball at his feet. And we're underway. So that's the 2024 Harry Cavan Youth Cup final is underway. And Lawrence send that one long. Upfield there looking for Harrison Knight. So that's headed out for a throw in. And Lauren immediately have some territory deep in the Crusaders half. Throw in taken. And that looks to be a corner, it is indeed. So after less than 30 seconds, Lauren immediately in the attack and they have themselves a corner. A good work there from Jay Patterson to win it. I think that's gonna be Ross Ferguson. My apologies, actually it's Callum Cowan. Number five on his back. Over to take this corner, a left footed in swinger coming from him. All Lauren players you can see there, so they've lined up at the back post. In it comes, it's good delivery right on top of the keeper, headed off his own goal line there. I think that was by William Francie. It's coming back in here from Lauren, across into the side netting in the end from Bryce Gray. So that comes to nothing really from Lauren, but good early pressure. When I say the Inver Reds, Inver Blues as they are tonight. Goal kick taking a short there by Scott Marshall. And Crusaders under pressure again, deep in their own half. Lauren have the throw in. Sent down the line. Had to clear there about Jonathan James. Lauren will just proceed a few steps up the touchline for another throw in. Taking their time with this one. Here comes looking for Knight again to the byline. He goes to ground. Nothing doing, says any of the officials. Goal kick to the Crusaders. And they'll be hoping here is two minutes gone. Just uh, hold on to the ball for a little bit. It's been all Lauren in the first couple of minutes. So there's James. Left footed ball forward. Good header one there by Matthew Beatty. But it's going to be sent back down Crusaders' throats. And a hook clearance ever. Rio Mullen, difficult one. And then out for a throw in in front of the Crusaders benchings. I can see Declan Cadell down there giving some instruction beside his 
former teammate and soon to be manager and player down there, Declan Cadell and Jordan Owens. And there's James again, forced into putting that ball in the touch. Everything for Lauren coming down that right hand side here in the early phase is this one. Going short to Knight. An attempt at cross there from Judo Hara. It's blocked out for throw in. That was Carter Bond back there doing a bit of defensive work. Set Lawrence throw. Jay Patterson sends it back. Cross in, headed away. And that's going to be a throw in to Crusaders. Who I don't think have even ventured into the Lauren half just yet. I'll be hoping to do a bit more of that. So Lauren is under the tutelage of Andy Mitchell. Looking to win this trophy for the first time since 1978. Add to the ever expanding trophy cabinet at Inver Park. Crusaders again, that's not great defending, but they've been let off the hook there. That's Jonathan James. Was fouled there by Harrison Knight. So a free kick to the young hatchet men. James again, I think I've mentioned his name more than anybody so far under pressure by Hastings, but he sends it long. And Sia tries to win the flick on, not sure he touched it, but Crusaders do have the ball here now. Matthew Beatty, but Lauren on the attack here now with Patterson. There's a cross and into the back post looking for Bryce Gray. Ness gets a good flicked header on. Gray will get to it himself and it's back to James Simpson. Cowan, ooh, that's a strong challenge there from Matthew Beatty. One that the referee didn't take too kindly to. Maybe just the anticipation, the nerves, the adrenaline going in the, the cup final. So he lets him away with that one, but I'm not too sure he'll get Another warning there. So Ross Ferguson standing hands on hips here over this one. Callum Cowan also interested or perhaps giving some advice. It is going to be Cowan to take it. That's delivered. Headed away by James again. And there's the captain, Bradley Maguire. Gets it away and a throw into Crusaders. The Crusaders team here in this final. A 1 0 victory over Dungan and Swifts in that semi final. Scored by Ryan Donnelly. He looks to be playing on the right of the front three tonight. Lauren have it back again. That ball's far too long, nobody in blue is going to get on the end of that one. And that's easy for Scott Marshall. There's Ness on the touchline. It's a caught late by Gray, advantage played. Here's Insia. Ooh, and he was caught by Hastings. Had to do a bit of hurdling there, so the referee does eventually give the free kick, which Crusaders are happy to take quickly, thanks to Rio Mullen. There's a ball over the top here. Looking to send Bryce Gray in behind. Ness doing a good job, and Gray, ooh, he fouls him. Just had a bit of a, a tug on the Crusaders defender's arm there to try and gain the advantage, but never he saw that. So, free kick Crus Crusaders just inside their penalty area. Basically, a goal kick for Scott Marshall. He'll play it short to Mullen. Sends him for a right footer. There's that man I mentioned earlier, the goal scorer from the semi final round, Donnelly, trying to get on the end of it. But comes to Ness and back to Mullen. His centre half partner, Francie. And there's James. Sends one down the touchline for the captain, Maguire, to chase. But it's going to beat him to the goal line there at the cop end. And for the first time tonight, Zach Robinson, the Lauren goalkeeper there, all in orange. 
get his first touch of the game with a goal kick on just over seven and a half minutes. Booms that one long, almost as far as the halfway line. Good flick on there from Knight, but first throw in to Crusaders in front of their gaggle of fans there. Okay, just to the, the left hand side of the halfway line as we look at it. And, uh, touch there from Carter Bond, but Well read in the end by Jay Patterson out for the throw in. Lauren also come through in the semi final of a score one to nil beating the Maiden City Strikers. The goal by their number nine up front tonight. Lamy has made a couple of appearances for the first team. Captain Jack Hastings. Really highly thought of player at Inver Park. Here's a Crusaders throw in now. And Sia comes short for it and Lawrence thought that was their ball but throw in again to Crusaders to be taken by Jonathan James in front of the Lauren head coach Andy Mitchell and another one that deflects out this time the last touch coming off Bradley Maguire the Crusaders captain so a throw in to Lauren so not really as they approach the 10 minute mark, nothing really for either goalkeeper to do. Lawrence certainly have dominated the territory, but Crusaders starting to find their way back into it, and they have a throw in there. Taken down there by that man again, Jonathan James. Looks for his options and it's a long one down the touchline looking for Insia, but it's too tall for him. And Logan Graham will go back to Robinson, his goalkeeper. It's time to look up and has to pick out James Simpson and does beautifully right onto his foot. But that one looked across the line, it did indeed. Assistant Maria Creaney on this side agreed with me there. Here's Ness with a throw in again looking for Insia, but that was telegraphed straight to Callum Cowan and Lauren tried to break but of a heavy touch there but it's won back nicely by Jay Patterson who was fouled by Jonathan James just going to get a look at that one Lauren meanwhile coming forward down the right hand side here and they're into the box Knight blocked again by James he's having a super early game the ball cannoning around in there, not really sure who the last touch came off. The linesman says that's a Crusaders throw. Nearly on their own corner flag there. It was a nice bit of nice touch by Jay Patterson to win the free kick there. But Lauren unable to do anything with it. There's a throw in. It's going to find its way one way or another. Ryan Donnelly on the right hand side. Haven't really seen him run yet. Socks around the ankles. Nice touch looking for Insia, but well read there by Ferguson. And Arnold will go back to Zach Robinson. He then one forward there from Logan Graham. Nicely flicked on by Knight. Can Patterson get there before the ball gets the touchline? No. Bumped off it by James. Throw taken by James. It does find its way to Insia. He looks for. Oh, and he finds Donnelly. Bit of a slip there for the Lauren defence. Donnelly's in one on one with Robinson. Defender coming back, and Donnelly puts it over the top. Maybe a bit of a bobble there just before he hit that one. That's the first real sighting of goal from either side that comes to the man, the danger man for Crusaders, Ryan Donnelly, down that right-hand side, the semi-final goal scorer. Just a bit of a bobble at the last, I think, and he, he sent that one high and wide, but first sighting of goal there for either side. And 
Zach Robinson will breathe a sigh of relief that he wasn't called into action there. I think it might have been James Simpson who gave that one away to Donnelly. There's McKinley. Looking for Donnelly again. Simpson travels with him this time into the right corner. Donnelly standing on the ball. Almost inviting Simpson to come and have a go, but Simpson does well, stands up to him. And gets it cleared in the touchline. Good defending that time from James Simpson. Donnelly's a tricky customer down that right-hand touchline, but he dealt with him well. Got a head tennis here. The ball getting a bit altitude sick. Eventually, Crusaders do bring it down. And ooh, good, strong challenge there from Carter Bond. He sends it out to Donnelly on the right-hand side. Cleared away. Not a great clearance, but thankfully for Lauren, it comes to a blue shirt. And at the end, Simpson's left boot swipes it clear. Yeah, header one there by William Francie. Patterson, who's been getting more and more involved. Jack Hastings up front, not so. And Larna want to change that as we approach the quarter hour mark here at Windsor Park. Harry Calvin Cup final coverage here. Thanks for joining us this evening. Nicely won back there by Maguire. Now James comes forward. There's Cole McKinley. forward Boom clear again by Simpson Joshua Ness brings it under control and calmly gives it back to his goalkeeper Scott Marshall Here's the James now Crusaders coming forward down the left with Francie giving away again neither side really able to keep a, a hold of possession Nicely won there by Ness ahead of Gray. Crusaders, after Lauren dominated the early stage, oh, lovely bit of skill there from Matthew Beattie. Gets a round of applause here, but well won back by Patterson. And Lauren now will just hope to hold on to the ball for a little bit. They did so very well in the early stages, but Crusaders certainly coming back into this one. There's Callum Cowan, that long ball forward. Jonathan James like a magnet to the ball tonight. He heads it away. See it. Is it robbed? There's Jude O'Hara. And man down there is Harrison Knight. Free kick. To Lauren on 15 minutes. Lauren side it. Say looking to bring this prestigious under-18s trophy back to Inver Park for the first time since 1978. And they've scored plenty of goals on their way here. Four against both Corian and Craigavon. Five past Annie United, but Glenavon in the first round gave them the biggest scare. Penalty shootout needed. This free kick is now delivered left footer. It's a good one. Marshall comes out and punches or palms it away. Whatever he did, he did the job. Ness now jostling with Gray and away comes the Crusaders man. Oh, looking for Donnelly. But straight to Simpson in the end. He's a, looks up and plays a nice left footed pass out to Harrison Knight, who's bundled to the ground by James. A free kick to Larn. Well, maybe we see Diego McGann in midfield for the first time. No, he's going to leave it to his midfield partner there, Ross Ferguson. Yeah, ball kind of travelling over both midfields so far. I haven't really mentioned the centre midfielders for either side, really. Crusaders, interestingly, there. Yeah, the two you can see on the screen, plus in Sia, staying forward. So it's almost a, a three on three. With gaggle of players there in the right corner of the box. That's where they go to. Left foot delivery is a good one. Oh, flicked on. It's in. And Lauren have the lead. A beautifully worked set piece. And it's Bryce Gray who flicks it in off the underside of the bar. And on 17 minutes, it's, it is Lauren 1, Crusaders 0. And a lovely set piece move straight off the training ground. The Lauren coaches will be delighted with that one. And it's Bryce Gray who gets the goal to give Lauren the lead. Beautifully worked goal, it really is. And the Invermen are ahead. Really their first effort on goal. 
Uh, works superbly, though. Okay. I hear the goal being announced here. Greet it with more cheers from those Lawrence supporters. There's a delivery there, actually, in the centre half, Callum Cowan, a super delivery from the right hand side into that danger zone in front of the goalkeeper where nobody's really sure who's going to go for it. And Gray put himself in there and flicks it in off the bar. So Crusaders now going to have to fight back from a goal down. That one's out for a throw in. So immediately Crusaders on the attack again down this right hand side. A nice touch there by Carter Bond. And a good pull in, looking for Maguire. Just a bit too long for his captain there from Bond, but an almost immediate response from Crusaders. That'll please their coaches down there. Steve McFerrin, Daglin Cadell, and Jordan Owens down the bench. But it's Lauren who lead. It's to Bryce Gray. Slam clear there by Logan Graham. And headed in the touch by Jonathan James. So Lauren with another possession. Midway inside the Crusaders half. A lot of the danger and all the chances created have come from down that right, but it was the man playing on the left. Here's the difference. Here's Hastings now. Goes to ground. Pops up there. Does very well to win a throw in for his side. Take a nicely done Knight's going to hit one and just never really in the right position to do so and shanks that one over the bar. Marshall will go out right to. Mullen. Ness. I can't really thank the centre half for that pass. He's forced to go back to his goalkeeper. Francie. Good sliding challenge by Knight, but equally good from Francie to win it back off Hastings, who was a little bit too strong for the referee's liking there. And he's going to get called over to have a word he did protest a little bit but perhaps just warning him not to not to be getting stuck in too much and Crusaders send that one forward and Sia is up there good header one there by Graham I think it was McGann and Simpson Lauren will try and come away with it now nicely done there and Ferguson Cowan oh, good challenge wins it back from Beatty but then Sia is robbed but does a good job winning it back off Diego McCann. And then proceeds to lose it again, and well, neither side wants to keep the ball at the minute. And now the ball, getting some air miles on it. Neither side just wanting to bring that ball down, and in the end, Jude O'Hara brings an end to that phase of play by slamming that one into touch and letting his defense get set again. and see it, good touch strong challenge you hear that one echoing around the stadium from Jude O'Hara on Bradley Maguire and here's Mullen big man at the back for Crusaders, we wouldn't look out of place in Declan Cadell's first team oh a lovely bit of skill there from Ness with a fast guy and he's still going Joshua Ness but in the end, his adventures are stopped short. Now here's the goal scorer, Bryce Gray, who then dances past Ness, has options ahead of him. One of them is Hastings, who has it now faced up by Mullen, but he gets the ball in, digs it across, volleyed clear. Sent back in by Simpson. And again, a bit of head tennis going on just outside the Crusaders' box. Eventually, Maguire will try and bring it down, but his immediately swarmed by blue shirts and Lauren come away with it with Harrison Knight.
Good ball in there, looking for Hastings, but good strong goal kicking there from Marshall. Let his defender know he was coming for it. Oops, Francie to Donnelly, but can't get a good touch on it. And Callum Cowan will go back to Zach Robinson. Cowan, the man who set up the goal for Price, a beautifully worked set piece move that saw Gray flick in the cross from Cowan via the underside of the bar. Side. Uh -huh. Long ball forward looking for Gray, but Ness cushions the header down for Donnelly. He looks for McKinley, but nicely done there by McGann. Now here's Diego McGann coming forward. Gray. Oh, McGann making a good run, but Gray ignores him instead goes back to Ross Ferguson. And all the way back again to Logan Graham on halfway. James sends one in there. Good ball looking for Hastings. It's James who gets in the way. Patterson has it back for Lauren. Now Knight, who's asking for a bit more help from his teammates there, and he gets it. Good touch from Knight. And a free kick given to Lauren. So, in for men. Our the ascendancy again here. A set piece that gives them the only goal of the game so far. As we're approaching the 25 minute mark at Windsor Park. Two man Crusaders wall. And both two Larn men over the free kick. It's a left footed delivery again. It's a brilliant one. It's from that man, Cowan, but Marshall does a good job. And sends one forward himself, looking for Donnelly. Well, there was Simpson, and the Larn man gets a, a boot in in front. And Mullen, that's one back by Bryce Gray, who hurdles the challenge. Hastings still going, still going Hastings, lovely skill. Oh, what a goal from Jack Hastings. I said how much he is rated at Inver Park, and he shows just why. Beautiful footwork from the Larn captain. I said they'd want to get him more involved, and that's just why. Beautiful, he beats one man stays on his feet and prods it into the bottom corner. And it's 2-0 to Larn here now on 26 minutes. Uh, well, the Crusaders players looking pretty dejected out there. They need to keep their heads up, get themselves back into this game. Rio Mullen, you can see, trying to do just that. It was his challenge on the first goal score, Bryce Gray, that sent him to the ground. But Hastings, beautiful footwork, I think it was Joshua Ness, who he just danced past. And a lovely finish into the corner. And it's now Crusaders nil, Lauren 2 in this Harry Calvin Cup final. What a first half for the Invermen. And Crusaders, well, had that chance early from Ryan Donnelly. A difficult one. They'll maybe be ruining that one. Nicely done there now from Carter Bond. Here's Maguire getting to the byline, gets a cross in and see it. To Don Laser, an immediate response, good block. Claims of handball, I think more hopeful than anything. And McGann gets it away for Lauren. There's Hastings coming deep this time to get that one. And another hopeful ball forward. That was a good response from Crusaders. They did the same after the first goal, but weren't able to get in there. But that time, and see it. Doing a good hold up job in the box and nicely done there from Bryce Gray. That gets it. Good response from the Lauren bench. He's putting his body in the line to get in the way of that one. There's Ness with the throw in. Taken down by Bond. And good hassle in there from Bryce Gray. Forces the throw in. Taken by Simpson. Takes a lot of steps up the touchline there, I must say, but nothing penalised. There's Hastings. Simpson left-footed. An interception there. 
from McKinley. But his teammates won't thank him for that. And here comes Lauren again. But Mullen intercepts and then hammers clear. And Sia is going to give chase. That ball's hung up in the wind a bit. And Robinson has to come out and deal with that one, which he does well. And Mullen sends it back forward. Knight with a flick on, but straight to Cole McKinley. Nicely done by Maguire, and he's going to test Jude O'Hara's pace down the left. Overlapping run be made by James, but he ignores him, goes inside to McKinley. A good, strong challenge from O'Hara, who seemed to have a few words for Maguire there on the way past, but throw in to Crusaders, and you have to feel they really do need to get themselves goal back into this one before the break. Try and keep Lauren out. Wouldn't say it's been utter dominance from Lauren. That's a free kick, a high boot there from McKinley. You wouldn't say it's been complete dominance from Lauren so far, but my goodness, when the chances have come, they have taken them. Clinical, you could say, and first one a super set piece move. The second, a brilliant solo effort from their captain, Jack Hastings. So it's a free kick here to Crusaders. Lauren will have to do a bit of defending here. Sent deep into the box there, you know, too deep in the end, and that's going to be disappointing. Nothing comes of that one. There's a delivery. There's some Bond. It was indeed Carter Bond. Um, too long, and Zach Robinson. Not exactly in a hurry to take this goal kick. That's a bit too early for time wasting, but happy to take his time. Sends it long, over halfway. What a kick. Sent back there nicely by James and now Maguire. The BD. There's Donnelly on the right hand side. He's tricky, but Simpson's done a good job with him so far and does so again. Nicely done, and he finds Gray. Back to Simpson and then sent clear over the left foot of Callum Cowan. Rio Mullen sends it back. Ness helps it on its way, but Simpson sends it back. Hastings, good work. And now here's where he's really tricky. He holds off the challenge, but his pass in the end to Knight is a bit short. And now, there's one for Harrison Knight to chase into the corner. Hastings, don't give him space, whatever you do. That's exactly what Crusaders have done, but he gives it back to Knight. Good right foot across in there. Gray peeled off there, trying to see if Ness would miss it, but credit the Crusaders player, he did his job. Came to handball, not exactly sure against who. <laughs> he couldn't really see. Here's Gray. Simpson overlapping, but he still goes back to Ross Ferguson. And Callum Cowan. Pursued by Ansia, but he leaves him in his wake and still go in the centre half. Oh, lovely ball. Simpson on the overlap. They stay on side. He did. Cuts it back. Oh, and nobody gets a touch. Oh, that's exactly where you want that ball to be put from James Simpson. And he's probably even hoping for a Crusaders touch. Might have sent that past his own goalkeeper, but in the end, it beat everybody. That's a super cross. Exactly what you want your left back to be doing if he's getting forward. And super work there. From James Simpson, but there's nobody on the end of it for Lauren. If they had been, I think that might have been 3 0. There's Nsia. Nice ball for Donnelly the chase, but there's Simpson again. No nonsense clearance that time. Also, something you want to see your left back doing. You can do it all, James Simpson. Here's Mullen. A bit frustrated with his lack of options, but he finds Ness with a nice pass. but he only finds Callum Cowan. And he'll roll all the way back to Zach Robinson, who hasn't had a save to make yet from Crusaders. They'll be wanting to change that one. And they're going to have to change it if they want to get back into this game. There's Bond. Good defensive work there from Logan Graham. a throw in to Crusaders so better field position for the hatchet men however they need to convert that territory and possession 
into meaningful chances, which they haven't really been able to do so far. Knight with a slice clearance. Gives McKinley a chance. Oh, and it's past the Ness, is short and picked up by Gray. And now he's away. He's outnumbered. And good defensive work there. Good covering from Matthew Beatty. And they clear up the danger there. And a good pass to find Donnelly. Down the right hand side. Now this time Cowan sticking with him. Donnelly holding him off well. Oh, nice ball in from Beatty to the back post. There's Maguire. Oh, maybe he could have hit that one. Instead, try to play it back across, and it was a block in the end from Jude O'Hara. But a corner to Crusaders. And that's better. That's going to give their two big centre halves there, Rio Mullen. And William Francie, a chance to get forward. You can see them there just approaching the D. A few big men in that side, Crusaders, as do Lauren. They'll be able to cope with them. They've got Nsia in there as well, a big forward. Maguire making a use of himself in front of the goalkeeper. Here comes a right footed delivery. It's a good one. And see, it wins the header and it's in. And the Crusaders are back into this one. He halves the deficit. And Bernard and Sia with a super header and a bit of an inquisition at the Lauren back there as to who was marking him. In the end, nobody really. Good work though from Bernard and Sia. And the deficit is halved here just over 10 minutes before the break. And we have a really good cup final on our hands now. Good delivery from that corner. And Sia found the space, and I said, Zach Robinson in the Lauren goal hasn't had a save to make. He still hasn't, but he's had to pick the ball out of his net. And the Crusaders front man has half the deficit, and that's just what you want, really. You know, the last thing we want in a cup final, well, unless you're a Lauren fan or connected with the club, is for this one to go very one-sided. Crusaders have stuck at it, like I said, Lauren haven't been dominant, you wouldn't say, they've been very good, took their chances when they've come and have put together some good football, but so have Crusaders, and now with 10 minutes plus stoppage time left at the end of this first half, they are very much back in this cup final, Simpson, he's been excellent, wins the ball, ahead of Donnelly again, Francie with the header, but here's Diego McGann, to Gray, oh, beats Ness far too easily for his liking there. And no, oh, look for McCann again, but his midfielder was a few steps behind there as to where Bryce Gray wanted him to be. So, goal kick to the Cruz. There's Mullen. Up to Marshall, and now Francie will bring it out from the back. Jonathan James back to Rio Mullen. Plenty of touches for him as well. And there's Joshua Ness. Mullen looking up and seeing that not many Crusaders men free, but he looks for a good ball over the top. The to Carter Bond claims a handball, not given, and Sia goes down, and only oh, free kicks given against him. In the end, I think he's he trod on the foot of Callum Kai in there. Bernard and see it. Asking the referee how that was given against him, but Adam Lawler, an official, clearing his decision. So, Lauren free kick just on the edge of the box there to be taken by the goalkeeper, Zach Robinson. Not quite convinced that see is 10 yards there. Neither is Robinson. And he's trying to let the referee know that, but it's inconsequential as he plays it. Laterally to Callum Cowan, who booms one forward left footed. It's a real luxury that Lauren have the, the left footed centre half, bit of a cliche, but to have him and Simpson on that left side together. Now on the right, this man, Jude O'Hara and Logan Graham. Brings a good balance to the back four with O'Hara's ball for Harrison Knight, just a bit too long. That man Mullen again. Looking for Carter Bond, but well read. However, given away by Logan Graham. And now in Sia with a well, rather optimistic effort. Trouble the cameraman behind the goal as opposed to the goalkeeper. But that's the, the confidence there from 
Bernard and Sia go for that one after a, after his goal. Had a well won there by Cole McKinley over Jay Patterson. Oh, about seven minutes plus stoppage time remaining at the end of this first half. It's been it's flown by, I have to say. It's been a really enjoyable half and Hastings and the Crusaders will be glad to see the flag and the, the whistle there. That foul on Jonathan James. With that not being given, they were in a bit of trouble. And <laughs> Jack Hastings saying, you want the ball for the free kick, come and get it. Marshall will come out and take it instead. And James sends one forward, left footer, a good ball. Bond wins a flick on and Donnelly's trying to get in behind and Simpson, more good defending there. Gets that one out, but no defender likes to turn and face his own goal, and that's exactly what Crusaders made Lauren do there. And you can see them growing in confidence now. I said after 2 0, it was really important they got the next goal, and they did. And you can see their confidence growing. Donnelly, good tackle though by Patterson. Ian Gray almost got in each other's way. Bryce Gray, so tenacious he really is. And he's won a side of throw in down there. Taken by James Simpson. It's a back, but Simpson in the end slices that one off the outside of the boot. He'll, he'll want that one back. But it's Ness to take the throw. See it. Oh, a lovely flick from Encia to bring McKinley into that one, but his pass can't find Bond and cleared away. Crusaders certainly back in this one, and the referee does. Well, he tells Joshua Ness to go backwards, who says, yes, ref, and then he turns his back, just takes the throw in from where he was. Hastings, outstretched leg, can't get to it, and Mullen back to Marshall good header one there by Graham over in Sia oh and good interception that was from Cowan if he didn't get to that one Bond was in behind that was crucial his pass though was too long for Ross Ferguson and Lauren come forward again oh and Simpson and Donnelly slide down the hill together and a free kick is given against the Lauren man despite his protestations Now we're back. No need for me to go into radio commentary there. That's the free kick here. Two Crusaders. Right on the touchline. we are taken here by their captain, Bradley Maguire. Right foot delivery. That's dangerous. And Simpson there again, though, to nod it behind for a corner. Good defensive work there from James Simpson, but Bradley Maguire will get another chance to deliver. And all the big men that have come forward for the free kick can stay there for the corner. You see Carter Bond immediately straight onto the goalkeeper there, and the referee doesn't like that. Immediately stuck to him like a magnet there. And again, the referee's told them not to do it, but he is just seemingly ignored the referee's instructions. Corner will be taken now by Maguire, and uh, disappointing in the end. He tried to get that one right on top of the keeper. You can see what he was doing, but in the end, just put it into the side netting. the ball with Simpson who sends one down the left looking for Gray the man who scored the opener for Lauren if you missed it it's 2-1 here Bryce Gray flicking in a, a cross from the left uh, right sorry after a lovely set piece move before Jack Hastings went there a solo effort dancing in out of a couple of Crusaders defenders before finishing past the onrushing keeper a super goal but Crusaders back in it a header from Bernard and Sia this man here from a corner and then right back in this, and it's been a really entertaining, a really even cup final as Boyd sends it down the corner and Simpson nudged out of it there by 
Maguire. Crusaders felt that was a, a pretty even 50-50. However, Lauren were of the opinion that was a foul, and the referee agreed. So we, that man, Callum Cowan, I mentioned, a centre half, super left foot on him. It was his delivery. But Gray flicked in off the bar for the first one. Here is Gray getting the head down and going after this one. He's going to get to it. Ness caught out of position. Gray into the box. Need to be careful now, but he's overran that, I think, yet. He has indeed. That was dangerous from Bryce Gray, but just his touch at the end let him down. I mentioned it 2-0, it was really important to Crusaders, didn't let the heads go down and kept in this one to say for anyone but those connected with Lauren would have wanted this one to be an even cup final, that's exactly what we have. There's Mullen to Francie on halfway down Maguire I'll send Looks for, well, I'm not really sure who. Went straight to Rio Mullen. We'll see very shortly here what sort of added time our officials have agreed on. There's Donnelly now appearing on the left hand side. It seems that he and Bradley Maguire have swapped positions. And there's a nice work there from Beattie, but a good challenge on him by McGann. And now Ferguson sends Knight away down the right-hand side. Can Larn finish this first half with a plum? Finish it on top. Hastings things into the corner, followed there by Francie. And that ball's gone out of play for a corner. Nicely done in the end by Jack Hastings. Wasn't much more he could do there, surrounded by a couple of Crusaders defenders, and he wins that corner kick. We're going to have one minute of added time here. So I would say after this corner, we'll not have too much more action before the referee blows the halftime whistle. And it's going to be the centre half again. I said a great delivery, Callum Cowan. Can he and Larn get that two-goal lead back right on halftime? Good header away by Beattie. It comes back out to Cowan, though, who has all the time in the world to deliver. Raise up his options. Oh, and tried to find Patterson the edge of the box, but couldn't. There's Simpson again. He's really calm and cool there at the back. A really good game and in this first half. Cowan out there still on the right-hand side. Now Knight. Knight, oh, lovely twisting and turning. Gets the ball in, but nobody really there in the middle. However, he has won a corner. Are we going to have time for it? Looks as though we will. I would say, though, this could indeed be the final play of the first half. We're very close to it. So... Callum Cowan is going to have another chance to try and find somebody in blue in the middle. Here it comes. Good delivery. Header one by Knight, and it takes a deflection, which took the sting out of it, and Marshall is able to catch it. Good save from the keeper, but the deflection, I say, on Knight's header just took the sting out of it, and that's the last play of the half. A really entertaining first half here in this 2024 Harry Calvin Youth Cup final. Lauren took a 2-0 lead thanks to goals from Bryce Gray. And from their captain, Jack Hastings, but Crusaders right back into this one, thanks to Bernard and Sia's goal. A really entertaining first half, and let's hope for more of the same in the second.
Hello everybody, welcome back for the start of the second half here at the National Football Stadium, Windsor Park. Very exciting first half that saw Lauren race into a 2-0 lead for this man about to kick off for Crusaders, Bernard and Sia. Brought it back, brought it back underway here on our referee Adam Lawler's whistle. 45 minutes now to decide the 2024 Harry Calvin Youth Cup Will the trophy be going back up the A8 to Inver Park, or will it be traveling the short distance to the shore route? We will soon see. If you don't get that answer in 90 minutes tonight, there will be extra time played of 10 minutes each way, as opposed to the usual 50. As it's a Pretty free kick in this second half here. Taken by Logan Graham. Sends it forward. There's the there's, uh, Lawrence second goal scorer, Jack Hastings, challenging. But header well won there by William Francie. Patterson, yeah, pulled back there by Cole McKinley. That's free kick to Lauren just a minute into this second half. So Lauren really started the, the first half on top. Converted that into goals. And Bryce Gray, a really well worked free kick move. And a bit of individual brilliance from Jack Hastings before and see it. The header from a corner. Half the deficit, so three Lauren players having a bit of a, a conflab over this one. Harrison Knight is sent on his way, so it's either going to be Callum Cowan there, number five. Or it's going to be McGann who hits it. Into the wall after all that. And was that a foul? Oh, yes, the official on this side, Maria Creaney, advised the referee in that one. It was Kyan chasing that one down with Ryan Donnelly. And that's a free kick to the young hatchet men. They defeated Institute, Newry City. Balamin United, and then the semi-final victory over Dungan and Swifts. Lauren, meanwhile, to get this far. One more than that in a second as Knight gets down the line. Good challenge on him by Francie. A new uh, goal kick given. Lauren not happy with that decision. So, a goal kick to be taken. I say, Lauren. Well, they put five past Annie United in the quarterfinals, four past Coleraine and Craigavon City before then. But it was Granavon who gave them most bother of uh, forcing the, the Inver Reds to go all the way to penalty shootout in the first round. And before a goal from that man who scored the second today, Jack Hastings, was enough to see them past the Maiden City strikers in the semi final. I look to bring the trophy back to Inver for the first time since 1978. So history awaits them if they can do it tonight. So these two have faced each other once in the league. That's the NIFL Under 18 Academy League. These two play in on the regular. Crusaders actually came away from Inver Park with a 2 1 win earlier this season. Lauren, now here's Gray, the goal scorer. Chased up by Joshua Ness. And Gray's going to win a corner. Good defending by Ness, but I'm sure. Lauren will be the happier with that outcome. And that's a corner kick four minutes into this second half, which Harrison Knight is striding over to take. As I said, Crusaders 1 2 1 at invert. Neither of their goal scorers, even in the squad today. Jack McComb and Brandon Downey, while Sam Nugent on the bench today for Lauren got their goal that day. It's going to be Knight's ball in here. It's good delivery. To the back post, there's 
Rio Mullen though is going to take a lot to get over the big centre half's head, but he'll flick it out for a throw in. And taken by Ross Ferguson. No, he'll leave it. There's fullback Judo Hara to take that one instead. Hara Knight really the only man in blue there for Larn and he is forced in the touch. Of course you can probably imagine so far. Crusaders in their traditional red and black stripes. Larn in their all blue chain strip here. Here's Callum Cowan. Gets away from the attention of Carter Bond and looks for Gray. He was on his on his heels though. Uh, all the way through to Scott Marshall. So I'll give you a run through the teams. We've no changes at half times. So for Lauren and goal, they have Zach Robinson there, numbered old fashioned 1 to 11. They've Judo Hara, Jim Simpson, Logan Graham, Callum Cowan, Ross Ferguson, Harrison Knight, Diego McGann, Jack Hastings, Jay Patterson, and Bryce Gray. The Crusaders, they give it on away. They're in more squad number territory. As there's a ball looking for Donnelly, but O'Hara will put that one into the north stand down below us here. They've got Scott Marshall and Goat. And it's this man, Ryan Donnelly, the captain, Bradley Maguire, Joshua Ness, William Francie, Bernard and Siet, Jonathan James, Matthew Beatty, Carter Bond, Rio Mullen and Cole McKinley. And we'll introduce the subs as and when. Good work there from McGann on Jonathan James. And he wins the goal kick. Good work from the defender. Both these sides, let's say, playing the NFL under 18 Academy League. Crusaders in fifth, four ahead of sixth place Larn. However, they have played incredibly four games more than the Invermen. Both sides came off wins at the weekend. Crusaders 5 2 over Loch Gaul, and Larn with a big victory over second place Linfield. But now here come Crusaders and Maguire. And Good hands from Robinson, the Lauren goalkeeper there, all in his bright orange to hold on to that one. Yeah, we'll look for his options ahead. Some well known Irish league names populating both benches tonight. Lauren, of course, there, managed by their former midfielder, currently of Carrick Rangers, Andy Mitchell. Good challenge there by Judo O'Hara. Crusaders, their head coaches. Stephen McFarren, McFarren, sorry, but next season's manager, Declan Cadell, is down there on the bench, as is Jordan Owens. Now here's Knight though with a strike and a dips in just wide. He's looking for the corner. All of his Lauren teammates are, they seem pretty convinced, but goal kick is awarded for that dip in effort there from Harrison Knight. So now Crusaders will try and build from the back with Mullen. Bryce Gray, he's Really hard working player. Got the first goal. Flicking in across from the free kick from Callum Cowan. Flicking it in off the underside of the bar. There's Ness with the throw in. Bond. Good ball down the touchline from Maguire. Followed in there by Cowan. Maguire gets past him. Gets the ball in. Looking for and see it. Good header away by Graham. A nice touch, but. Cleared away there, the touch from Matthew Beatty. He's still jostling there with Jay Patterson. He's really given Lauren a bit of difficulty there. And in the end, he well, really wins the side, a throw in. Right in front of Andy Mitchell. See him there in his grey tracks at top. Gesticulating at his side. So went down the line. There's Nsia, good touch. Robbed, but there's Bond and Ness back to Nsia, who uses strength to hold off Cowan and uh, tries to bring Ness in, but the uh, Crusaders fullback couldn't bring that one under control. And that's a throw in to Larn, taken there by James Simpson, who was very impressive in the first half, both going forward and defensively. And I'll take another throw in here. Ten minutes gone in this second half. It's kind of beginning much like the first did, in that there's not a whole lot of goal mouth action, but plenty of endeavour from both sides. I didn't see it. 
looked sneakily like it was coming back from an offside position, but not spotted. Now here's Rand Donnelly, the danger man for Crusaders. Oh, good interception there. That was from Logan Graham. As Donnelly looked for Bond. There's Francie on halfway, booms one forward left footed and finds Maguire who just slightly overran it. And now away comes Simpson for long blue shirts ahead of him there. To go himself and is going on a nice jinking run here. Hastings, good strength to hold off the challenge from Ness. Lauren approaching the penalty area. Good ball overlap and run here. Harrison Knight is in the box. What's he going to do? He's got options. Oh, and saved. And they can't get it clear, Crusaders. They do. Patterson goes to ground, but nothing doing, says the referee. And that was dangerous. Harrison Knight just afforded the freedom of the Crusaders' penalty area. And when he cut it back, a bit of a goal might scramble. I saw Jay Patterson end up on the ground, but nothing doing, says Adam Lawther, our referee. So Lauren will have to be a content here with a throw in midway inside the Crusaders' half. We'll see some Lauren subs on the far side from us here. Going to get themselves warmed up. Not the most strenuous looking warm up, I must say, but perhaps, as I say, just over 10 minutes into the second half will be Andy Mitchell considering turning to his bench. Mullen wins a header there, but Ness, I think, trying to prevent that one going from a corner and does so, but a Lauren throw in. Deep in opposition territory. There's James Simpson to take that throw in. So no options looking short for him here. Well, Gray's going to come short, but Simpson still has ball in hand. Referee telling him to get on with it. Eventually he does find Gray on the byline. Good touch from Bryce Gray. Bryce Gray still going. Oh, lovely touch from Bryce Gray. Oh, good save by Marshall. Super save there by Scott Marshall, the Crusaders goalkeeper. To prevent Lawrence third and Gray second. Lovely footwork he got in. That's Rio Mullen, who you can just see giving his goalkeeper a thank you there because Bryce Gray left Rio Mullen for dead there. But a good save from Scott Marshall. Keeps the deficit at one. But here comes a Lauren corner to be taken by the centre half. Callum Cowan, a wicked left foot that he has. A real weapon to have in one of your defenders. And it comes right down top of the keeper. What a delivery, but good header by Bernard and Sia and now Crusader will try and go on the counter oh and James he got past Gray but not Simpson he's having a super game in the left back another one like Jack Hastings who has tasted some first team action at the Inverez these two of course the first team of these two they clashed at Inver Park on Saturday Crusaders come out on top 1-0 in that one I'll be hoping to make it a double here tonight as Donnelly now trying to sprint away from Harrison Knight who stuck with him well Donnelly into the box he's so dangerous when he gets in there and it's a corner in the end off of Logan Graham Donnelly well safe to say not the biggest man on the pitch but my goodness when he gets going he is really difficult to stop and especially when he gets in close to the penalty area and into the penalty area you can't touch him for risk of a spot kick Crusaders corner, I mean that's Carter Bond down there to take it, if I'm not mistaken. Here comes Levy at the front post, dangerous enough, but well dealt with by Knight doing his job on that front post. Bond will keep it in and deliver the cross instead of taking the throw. Mullen wins a header at the back post above Simpson, but nobody in red and black able to get on the end of it. So that's a goal kick to Larn. Puts in the arm mark here. Thoroughly entertaining Harry Calvin Youth Cup final between Crusaders and Larne. All the goals so far coming in the first half, but we've come close. At both ends here in the first 15 or so of the second half. Not the only football here being played today. The Northern Ireland senior women's coming away earlier in their trip to Bosnia with a fabulous 3-1 win following their goalless draw here at Windsor Park with Malta last week. That's a super result for Tanya Oxlobe's girls. 
Nice touch there from Donnelly. A one two with James, but cross comes Graham to deal with that one. He does so well. Francie gets a good header up ahead of Hastings. And brought down by BD and CI. He's a really good centre forward, although first of the commentator there, he's came back from an offside position, so free kick, Lauren. And there's the 60 minute mark here at Windsor Park. A uh, bright, sunny evening. Early evening has given way to the night sky here over South Belfast. The boys in North Belfast hoping to get a goal here, but there was some East Antrim now on the attack. Simpson, lovely ball over the top to Gray to the byline. Cuts it back well, but Hastings overran it. There's O'Hara. Diego McGann now into the corner. Challenged by Beatty. And he gets the, or Lauren, should I say, get the bounce off the corner flag and out for a corner kick. So another kick. They make that their third of this half. And Callum Cowan again will come forward from the back to take said corner. I was about to say there it's one on one at the back for Crusaders with Simpson and Maguire. But Diego McGann has come back there. But Ren Donnelly. So that's has so often been the case in this half. It's a. Uh, Two on two at the back, but anyway, Demater's in the box. Good delivery from Cowan to the back post. There's Nsia again in the same penalty area that he scored his header from an attacking corner. Not for the first time this evening, doing some good defensive duties. The big forward. Gray, lovely work from him. And there's a cross in from Knight and straight into the, the midriff there of Scott Marshall in the Crusaders goal. He rolls out to William Francie and now Jonathan James down the touchline. See it was the offside again. Lauren claim it. No, lovely touch from and see it. They set Donnelly away into the left corner. Gets the ball in to the edge of the box. Well dealt with by Jay Patterson. Good defensive work. Owen oh, Mullins let that one go past him, and Hastings is in behind him now. It's two on one, but we saw what Jack Hastings is doing in the first half. He tries to do it again, but Mullen does credit. Recovers well, and his centre half partner William Francie with the clearance. Uh, an apologetic hand there from Rio Mullen. Just let that ball slip under his foot, but Jack Hastings couldn't get in after it, and now well, I thought Hastings initially was sitting down there to maybe tie his lace. But well, it maybe is in a bit of pain. Let's hope it's nothing serious for the Lauren captain. A super player is Jack Hastings, one who thought very, very highly at Inver Park has Made a first team appearance. He just 16 last season. He's been involved in a few squads this year as well. Good crowd inside Windsor Park tonight, generally. As we look at it here to the left of the halfway line is the Crusaders fans to the right is Lauren. Jack Hastings now is back to his feet. Doesn't seem to be limping. So let's hope for his sake and for Lawrence that he is able to continue. But as it is, it's a throw in to Lauren. James Simpson to take it. Patterson comes short back to Simpson. He now goes into the penalty area and decides against it. And goes back to Gray and now Patterson. Jay Patterson, lovely touch. Ooh, what a thumping challenge on him there. Lawrence still have it, and Patterson's back on his feet, and he gets it in, or tries to. And deflected behind, oh no, it was a bit of a miscue off the boot there of Jay Patterson, and good news for Lauren is that Jack Hastings is okay and returns to the field. And here's William Francie now, left-footed, and that's not where he wanted to put that one, and Gray intercepts, lovely touch though from Bryce Gray, but... Also an excellent touch from Matthew Beattie to win it back, and he holds off the challenge of Gray. And I forward come Crusaders, but a bit of a hopeful punt. A run all the way into the gloves of Zach Robinson. The Lauren goalkeeper, 20 minutes just under. Played in this second half here, this 2024 Harry Cavan Cup final. Lauren going into a 2-0 lead, and Crusaders pegging them back, and so far that's how we've stayed. No goals in this second half, but... Also an entertaining half of football as William Francie launches that one into touch and a 
Top Cooks and Personal with a mic down there. Judo Hara now to looking to send one down the touchline, looking for Hastings, and he finds him. Hastings to the byline with Francie. Hastings does get across in. Easy pickings for Mullen to clear. And about three Lauren players went for one ball there, and in the end, it's the Crusaders, man. Bradley Maguire that's come away with it. Wins a throw in and takes it immediately. It's a good one over the top to Carter Bond. Cowan and Graham surround him. And there's the cross then from James. is a good one, but well dealt with in the end there. I think that was by Ross Ferguson. There's a ball delivered in. And James not dealt with. Oh, that's how you deal with it. Callum Cowan smashes that one clear. And Bryce Gray does a good job of keeping it in, but Mullen's going to get to that one before Simpson. There's Donnelly, nice bit of skill, but Gray was waiting for him. Clearance claims the handball given. There against Joshua Ness, the Crusaders right back. And then there's another Lauren man down here, stretching his legs. I think that looks to me like Diego McGann. Back to his feet though, but grimacing slightly and holding that hamstring. There's some Lawrence subs, couple returning to the bench and a couple heading down the tunnel. Not sure what the significance of that is, but well, there's no Crusader subs currently warming up. Perhaps Lauren will utilize their bench soon. Here's McGuire for Bond. Nice header looking for Insia running onto it. Bernard Insia, good touch to get away from O'Hara. Graham's come with him. And does he concede a corner? Yeah, he does. Took the, both the linesman and referee some time to make the decision, but good work from Bernard and Sia. Also good defensive work, though, from Logan Graham to get the one behind for a corner kick. It's going to be taken here by Carter Bond. You big men in red and black to aim at in there. On delivery and away. Oh, and a hit there from Francie. What a block. Loud claims of handball. More from the stands than the pitch, I must say. But away in the end by Patterson. And a good, crucial header won there by James above Hastings. And good, strong defensive work there from James Simpson. That's that one roll behind for a corner. I think that was down there with Cole McKinley. The referee just wants a word with Simpson a little bit after. There's nothing really too much in it, I have to say. Just a word between the two, just to keep things civil. Really sure how necessary it was, but Adam Lawler clearly saw something he wasn't too keen on. There's a throw in taken down the line. I don't think it touched anybody. And it'll go out for a Crusaders throw, which Ness takes. Into Bond. And away by Gray. Got sandwiched between Ness and Bond. And free kick given. Over 20 minutes to go now. Here at Windsor Park. Still as it was at half time. Crusaders 1, Lauren 2. This Harry Calvin Youth Cup final. A reminder that if Crusaders do get an equaliser here, that it'll be 10 minutes each way about a time. That looked like a hand there by McGann. As he challenged with and see it. And the referee does give it McGann. A couple of minutes ago, I said, was feeling his hamstring and his. Still moving a little bit gingerly there, so we saw some Lawrence subs disappear down the tunnel, perhaps to get some last-minute instructions. And perhaps McGann might be one of those replaced. A free kick. Two Crusaders are saying there, if the, the Hatchet men do get an equaliser and we finish level after 90 tonight, it will be decided 10 minutes each way of extra time as opposed to the usual 15, and if we still don't have a winner after that, 
half penalties. Ball four from Mullen looking for Maguire. Oh, lovely touch by Maguire, but well dealt with by Cowan. Well, or not, blocked. Donnelly and Graham bails him out in the end. Good, strong challenge there in the midfield from Beatty, though, to win it back for Crusaders. Now here's Nsia. And now Lauren will try and come away, but they can't. Lovely footwork there from Bradley Maguire. Oh, causing a bit of chaos at the back for Lauren, but they do well to deal with it. Long ball forward. Ness, nicely done to Donnelly and Gray's back there with him and concedes a corner. So as we hit the 70 minute mark here at Windsor Park, Crusaders on the hunt for an equaliser. And they have themselves another corner. It's going to be the captain to take it. Bradley Maguire. A left footed in swinger it will be. Seen some good delivery set pieces on both sides tonight. And that's another good one from Maguire and Robinson. Ooh, forced to tip it over. I think he, he seemed to say it actually came off the bar and went over, but both linesmen and referee immediately pointed for another corner kick. So Bradley Maguire will get another chance and those deliveries right in on top of the goalkeeper. No matter who is in goal, it's always a dangerous one. And then it comes again from Maguire. And he's went to the front post that time and James Simpson volleys clear. McKinley. And this far as Ness and Lauren under the cosh a bit. Mullen with the flick on and see it. Gets on the end though on the edge of the box. Dummies to shoot. Does hit one. Doesn't get through the Lauren defenders. But Francie will get that one for Knight. But he runs into a good strong challenge by Jude O'Hara. And now O'Hara can come away. Looking for options ahead of him. Sees Jack Hastings who's fast. And gets on the end of that one. He has next to no support with him. Hastings. He's going to do his best to hold it up. O'Hara's come up there with him. And he finds him. Or not. Good work there defensively from Matthew Beatty. Just to see that one over the byline. And away from O'Hara. We are seeing now some Crusader subs getting themselves ready. No word yet on either side. Using their bench, although I do see Andy Mitchell sitting down to have an in-depth chat with one of his subs. So we'll say we'll see one soon as there's a cross and well intercepted by Logan Graham, but it's another corner for the crews. And we Maguire again to take from that side. Said Lauren just under the cosh a little bit. And we knew that either side were always going to be. And now we see another Lauren player down the box just stretching for a bit of cramp. Can't quite catch who that is. There's also a Crusaders player on the edge of the box stretching his legs out. And we're, it's a cup final. The adrenaline's flowing. Both sides are up and down the pitch. It's a big pitch here at Windsor Park. They're feeling it certainly. Maguire with a delivery right on top of the keeper, and there's a good header over from James Simpson. But it's Maguire can stay where he is for the second time in a row. It's back to back corners from the Crusaders captain. We have another one, and Sia and Mullen, amongst others, in there. McKinley making a late arrival. It's not going to find him. It might find Sia. Got away by O'Hara. Not clear yet. Patterson's in there. And a strike from Francie. A snapshot wide. And a corner from the other side now. Another corner for Crusaders. This one, Carter Bond is going to take a right footer in swinger. So, Crusaders wearing out the corner quadrant here. But yet to get anything from it. Bond, nice one. Oh, and off the line by Simpson. Goodness me, over. The goalkeeper Robinson, thank goodness for Lauren. The Jim Simpson was there, and there he is again, winning a throw in super well. It's maybe a bit early for man of the match calls, but he's right up there for me. He's had a wonderful game, the Lauren left back. Like I said, he just like Hastings up front has had some looks at the first team recently, and you can really see why. Take that throw in, and he's well, he's ran about 10 yards up the touchline, but doesn't everybody know it? Get another throw. And starts the, the dander up the touchline. Crusaders fans on bench there have noted that one, but throws it in, but he's going to get another one. 
We are going to see the first sub of the night for Lauren. It's going to be Ambrose Ajala, who's coming on on that far side. A little bit keen to get on there, forgetting that the fourth official has a job to do. So the sub won't be on yet. The throw's taken instead. McKinley clears. Nice layoff from Bond. The Ness looking for NCA. Wins a header. He's so strong. It's come from Maguire. He's got an option to his right. Oh, heavy touch by Maguire. He still has it. He had Donnelly to find. There's another corner for Crusaders at Bradley Maguire. And maybe could have been more there. He had Ryan Donnelly to his right. Wide open, but just a touch let him down somewhat towards the end. And it's going to be a corner. Instead, another Crusaders corner. And they are really hammering on the Lauren door here for an equaliser. Carter Bond takes it. Another good in swinger. A good header away. And that man Simpson again. Donnelly now trying to shake off the attention of Harrison Knight. He does. A couple of men unmarked at both offside. And the two centre halves, both Francie and Mullen, went for the same ball. And it, I think they were both offside, truth be told. But three unmarked players in red and black at the back post. And the man to come off here is going to be Harrison Knight. He gets a good round of applause, a good night's work from Knight. And it's going to be Ambrose Ajala, who is going to enter here with just under 15 minutes to go. Knight not exactly in a hurry to make his way to the touchline, as you would expect. And now on comes... Ambrose Ajala. See where he's going to go. He's going to fit into this. Our front line. Bring on a, a tactical note there to give to Jay Patterson. It looks as though Ajala is going to lead the line, perhaps. So, yeah, it looks like it's going to. Ajala up front. Patterson out to the right, and Hastings dropping in behind. As a attacking midfielder. Just behind the striker. There's Ryan Donnelly, who runs into Patterson. And O'Hara, you know, the, the ball that was too long for both Hastings and Ajala. So in there from Jonathan James. In there to who's immediately shoved off that one by Ajala who's still challenging and has conceded the free kick so good strong play there from Cole McKinley to hold off Ajala free kick here Taken by Jonathan James on the left foot. Good delivery. And if Lauren Header flicks it on the end, <laughs> Simpson and Francie collide with each other. And now Gray is going to try and come away here. And sends Ajala in behind. Good work from Joshua Ness, but Ajala's going to keep going. And he keeps going. Ambrose Ajala has it in the box. He's got Patterson with him. Oh, and maybe it wasn't the best option. Patterson had a Crusaders man on him. Perhaps Ajala should have gone for goal himself, but not so. O'Hara now finds McGann. And a bit of a heavy touch from Diego McGann. And that's out for a throw in. Crusaders waiting to make a sub on the far side. And that's coming on now. If we look a bit closer here, the Crusaders squad number is quite difficult to read. Looks to me that it's going to be Owen Conlon. Who's coming on for... It is the goal scorer, Bernard and Sia. An excellent outing from him. A really good 79 minutes from Bernard and Sia. But it's going to be Owen Conlon who's on in his place. Maybe a throw in. Finds Conlon, but one back by Lauren. Here's Hastings. I say dropped deep into the midfield. Patterson to a jala. Holds off the challenge of Francie well, but. The Crusaders defender sticks with him. McGuire's pass looking for Bond. Ooh, and a good ball over the top there. 
Almost find Bryce Gray. There's a Jala. Good challenge. There from BD. Now here's Conlon. Challenge there from Jude O'Hara. Throw in now to Crusaders on that left hand side. A bit of cramp there on Logan Graham, being helped out by a sportsman like there from Carter Bond. Anyone who's played football or any sport knows that the pain that cramp can bring you. So, or else it's be just a case that he's wanting to get things hurried on. But there's Bond certainly not showing Graham any sportsmanship there as he chases down into the corner. And Graham, despite hobbling somewhat, gets the, the ball out of play for. A throw in. There's Conlon. Chased into the corner by Patterson. And throw in Crusaders. They really are banging in the door here in this second half. They've been a better side in this second half. The round of applause you're hearing is as Bernard and Sia makes his way round to the far side. An excellent outing appreciated by the Crusaders fans down there. Another throw in, this time off McGann. James. To Conlon, bit of a heavy touch, but James gets it back and that look like that struck Conlon's hand, but it spins away to Hastings. He looks for a Jala, but Mullen will go back to Marshall now as goalkeeper. It's a risky ball, but finds Francie, who has options ahead of him, who's left footed, much like the Lawrence Centre has. Mullen and Francie both on a right footer, one left footer. James to Conlon who's gone on to the wing and Bond is up the middle with Maguire all over the top too long for Ajala and Mullen can go back to Marshall 8 minutes plus stoppage time to go and Lauren hang on and win a first Harry Cavan Youth Cup since 1978 and swell the Inver Park Trophy room even more O'Hara down the line looking for Ajala good volley clear there by James Ambrose, lovely touch on there from Ajala to Patterson into the box here now. Jay Patterson, oh, and look for the cutback, but good work from Rio Mullen. But Ambrose, Ajala's won it back. Patterson stayed down the box. Ajala still going, still going, and just couldn't get the shot away, but does win the corner. Despite Rio Mullen, aghast by that decision. Jay Patterson stayed down and ultimately probably ended up getting in the way of Ambrose, Ajala, but Mullen... Happy to help out with Patterson. We have players coming up with cramp here. To say it's a, it's been a really end-to-end -end game. Great endeavour from both sides, and to say the, that's the adrenaline flowing in the a cup final as well adds to that one. The lactic acid certainly building up in muscles all over the place. However, Jay Patterson perhaps. Unfortunately for him, this one might be a little bit more than just cramp. We hope not. But we have got the physio on to take a look. Seven minutes to go. This cup final still on a knife edge with Lauren going 2-0 up inside the opening half an hour. We worried that, well, that might become a bit of a one-sided affair, but massive credit must go to Crusaders. They have not only stuck in this game, but arguably in this second half have been the better side. Really knocking on the door, but Larn's defence has held tight so far. Got less than 10 minutes to do so to win the cup here. Jay Patterson's still down. There is a couple of Larn subs getting ready, so I imagine maybe this is will shortly be the end of his night. It was a nice, bright, sunny evening, however. A little bit chilly here at Windsor Park this evening, to say the least. Looking ahead to warmer climbs this summer. It's confirmed today that Northern Ireland will be travelling to Mallorca to take on Spain in June as part of 
La Roja's Euro 2024 preparations. Although we're standing in Windsor Park, it's not quite Mallorca in June, but we've got that to look forward to. Meanwhile, Jay Patterson is off the pitch, but Lauren have this corner. Cowan will take it right on top of the goalkeeper. Marshall who drops it. Ajal is in there, but he's fouled the goalkeeper. And Scott Marshall didn't take too kindly to the Lauren forwards attentions there. Nothing comes of it though, and Crusaders are on the way here now with James up the middle looking for Conlon, but too high for him, and James Simpson gets it clear. O'Hara, I think, caught Donnelly, but Crusaders maybe could have had an advantage there, but Adam Law, the referee, says free kick, so that'll give a chance for Crusaders to get their defenders forward here. And they're also going to make a couple of subs. Jay Patterson, you can see there, is back on the pitch. And James with the delivery here, left-footed. Another good one. Header won by McGann and loops up into the air and into his goalkeeper's gloves. He'll be glad to see. Got a couple of Crusaders subs down there. I can see the number 92 shirt of Orelai Karabechai coming on. The other, can't quite see who it is yet, but we're going to see now. And this is a throw in right on halfway to Crusaders. As I say, who have been in the ascendancy in this second half but haven't been able to get that crucial equaliser. They're hoping these two subs can help them do just that. So the first man to be withdrawn then is Joshua Ness. The right back is had a good evening and he's replaced by Orlai Karabechai. And the other sub then we're going to see coming off is Cole McKinley. And he's replaced by Oscar McKenna. So that's Karabechai and McKenna here on for Ness and McKinley. As we're into the last five minutes of normal time, but there will be, I would imagine, a chunk of added time with injuries and cramp-related issues. Lauren also, I think, preparing a sub down there to help them see this game out. certainly have not had things all their own way tonight Lauren but they lead good challenge there by Ross Ferguson and now Ajala is on his bike in behind Marshall read that one well though and comes out the clearance isn't great but it's enough and Ajala really a big physical forward and putting himself about but getting on the wrong side of the referee is that time he clatters into Jonathan James Free kick though from Marshall. Conlon couldn't bring it under control. Oh. From O'Hara is sent back by James. There's Karabachai, the substitute with his first touch. Conlon, McGann can't intercept. Maguire, a good challenge. There by Cowan. James sends one in. And cleared away again. So, so far, Lauren are propelling everything the Crusaders throw at them right back at them. James blocked by Patterson up into the air. Flicked on by McKenna, the substitute. Another sub here, Conlon. He has a deep cross in there. Donnelly's at the back post. Simpson is with him. He's marshaled him very well tonight. Oh, lovely skill there from Donnelly. He fell over his own feet, but he's still going. Still going, Donnelly. Lovely skill. It's a back to Maguire. A bit of a heavy touch, and there's Simpson in again. As Patterson and now Lauren are on the break here. Hastings to his left. Ajala ahead of him. He looks for Hastings. He's in behind Mullen. Jack Hastings still running right up to the last minute here. Patterson wants it at the back post. Hastings has beaten Mullen, but it's a big ass to get the ball in from there. Still going, Hastings, and does a good job to win the corner off Rio Mullen. Good challenge from the big Crusaders defender, but a good counter-attack from Lauren that lifts the pressure. And they're going to make a sub here, and it's going to be Jay Patterson, who is going to come off an excellent outing from him, but he was struggling. It'd 
been struggling with a bit of cramp and some other issues perhaps and it's going to be the man I mentioned who actually scored the goal in Lauren's league defeat to Crusaders, Sean Nugent who is going to come on here as the clock here on our screens in the stadium ticks towards 90 and the fourth official will soon be telling us what sort of added time we'll have. Let's say, like I said, we had won the first half. I'd be very surprised if it wasn't more than that. As Nugent immediately makes his way into the box to try and get on the end of this corner kick. Taken left foot out, swing this time by Cowan and it comes, header by Jalla oh, on the roof of the net. Oh, that would have been the clincher had that one gone in, but the header from Ambrose Ajala on the roof of the net. We're going to have five added minutes here, by the way. So I said there would be a good chunk of added time. We're getting into the last chance saloon here for Crusaders. There's Karabecha, a lovely turn away from Cowan. And as the referee, I think, giving a free kick. The new Crusaders he has. He's held back in the end there by Callum Cowan. Though the substitute, Orle Karabechai. As one Crusaders, a really dangerous free kick. As we're now a minute into the five added on here. The end of this Harry Cavan Youth Cup final. Lauren have led since the first half. They took a 2-0 lead inside the half hour mark. Crusaders got one back before the break and have been battering on the Lauren door in this second half but haven't been able to break it down. Can they do it from this free kick? It's Maguire and Bond who are over at the right foot of Bond, the left of Maguire. It's going to be Maguire to hit it into the wall. Disappointing, comes back to him, has another chance, hits it low, blocked again in the box this time by Graham. And Lauren have a chance to break Nugent and Ajala ahead. That's a dreadful challenge. It has to be said there from Maguire, perhaps one born out of frustration. And we're going to get a yellow for him as well. So Cowan got one there. And now Maguire, we had none up until this point, but a card each to two defenders. As I'm sorry if you've been recording the Manchester City score, might have heard it in the background there. That's your night ruined or else night made, as the case may be. But a we're in the stoppage time here at Windsor Park. Cowan blasts one forward, headed away by Mullen. Brought down by Hastings, he's been excellent. I'm man of the match for what it's worth, I'm giving it to this man who heads it away, James Simpson, a super game at left back for Lauren tonight. Both going forward and in his usual defensive duties. He's going to come forward and take this through. I wouldn't imagine he'll be too much of a hurry. Why would he? But Lauren on exactly the part of the pitch that they want to be. A third goal, I'm sure, would be nice to put the gloss on it, but they'll not care if they don't. They've got another throw deep in Crusaders' territory. and Well, you don't need me to tell you that Crusaders need the ball up the other end of the pitch and fast. But we're around two minutes or so away from Larne, winning a first Harry Cavan Youth Cup since 1978, Andy Mitchell's men. And they've won a corner. That's exactly what they'll be looking for. Well, Logan Graham is still coming forward for it. No, he's told the, the hang back. They're definitely not going to be putting this one into the middle, that's for sure. We've got a couple of gusts of wind here towards the end of the night at Windsor Park. That corner then goes for a throw in. Which Simpson will again take. Right in the corner. Hastings in there again, he manages to keep it in. Donnelly will get it away, but only as far as Bryce Gray, the man who opened the scoring tonight, and he's going to go for a third here. Gray tired Crusaders defenders into side netting. Almost put the gloss on the result in the end. Bryce Gray, the man who opened the scoring, but now Crusaders are on the attack, and Marshall's ball is just too long for Jonathan James. Now we've less than 60 seconds to go here at Windsor Park. Jude O'Hara with ball in hand, Lauren with ball in the Crusaders' half is exactly where they want it. They dominated 
for much of the first half. They have been under the cosh for much of the second. But they're around 30 seconds away from lifting the trophy. If that does happen here in 90 minutes, we'll have the trophy left for you shortly after full time. Marshall sends it long. McGann wins a header. O'Hara. Nugent sends it high up under the lights here at Windsor Park. Ajala into the back of William Francie, who has gone down holding his leg. You would imagine he's looking to waste time. Hope he's okay. He is back to his feet. And Marshall will take the, the free kick. Surely last chance saloon for Crusaders. They're getting everybody forward into the Lauren half. Francie can't run, so he might have to hang back. But everybody else is forward. Last chance for Crusaders. Marshall, super long kick. Exactly what they needed. Off the head of a learned player and into the goalkeeper's arms. Exactly where they need it. Zach Robinson lies down with ball in hand in the six-yard box. We've played the five minutes and more here of out of time at Windsor Park. And Larne are on the verge of a first Harry Cavan Youth Cup since 1978. And there it is. The Invermen have won it this evening. A super final. The Crusaders players are crestfallen. And you have to feel sorry for them. A super riding from them. They can be proud of their efforts. But Larne's two goals in the first half were enough to win it. They held off. A really resurgent Crusaders fight back. They were under the cosh for much of the second half, but they have won it. Larn under 18s are the champions of the 2024 Harry Cavan Youth Cup. A superb final. Stick with us. We'll have the trophy lift for you very shortly.
The back here, folks, just in time to see. Well, we've got a man of the match from the runners up this evening. Ryan Donnelly receiving that award. An excellent evening for him, I must say. So, a bit of a consolation prize for young Ryan Donnelly. A, a bright future ahead of him, I'm sure. So we're going to see our officials here now get their medals. They're presented by Conrad Kirkwood, the president of the Irish Football Association. As for our referee this evening, Adam Lawler. Our assistants, Jonathan Cartmill and Maria Creaney. And then our fourth official, Jimmy Gordon. All getting their medals before Conrad Kirkwood will now present the runners up Crusaders with their medals. We have to say, a really hard fought final. An excellent performance from them. As I said, probably encapsulated by the fact that their own Ryan Donnelly got there man of the match and Crusaders now coming forward to see their medals in no particular order really it seems but just a, a run through their side once more the players in their squad the starting lineup was Scott Marshall, Ryan Donnelly Bradley Maguire the captain, Joshua Ness William Francie, Bernard and Seat their goal scorer in the first half Jonathan James, Matthew Beatty Carter Bond, Rio Mullen Cole McKinley and their subs also getting their medals tonight Matthew Boyle Oscar McKenna Connor Cunningham Matthew McWilliams Leon Barr Owen Conlon and Aurele Karabecci sure bitterly disappointed the young Crusaders players but a fabulous showing from them and as I say I'm sure a bright future ahead of many of them but now we're going to see the winner's medal is going to be presented to Lauren by Wayne Glenn, who's the chairman of the Junior and Youth Football Cup Committee. Before he'll also be presenting the, the cup to the winning captain of Lauren, which is Jack Hastings, who scored their second and ultimately decisive goal tonight. Lovely bit of skill to get himself around a couple of Crusaders defenders before poking the ball into the corner. This is after Bryce Gray got their first goal. A well worked set piece move. And he flicked in the cross on the right in via the underside of the crossbar. So a night to remember for these young yarn, young alarm players, excuse me. A first Harry Cavan Cup for the club since 1978. So add to the ever growing trophy cabinet now at Inver Park not just the first team the winning trophies of course the Larne first team and down the stretch top of the Irish Premiership with these young players showing it's not just the first team that can win silverware a few of those Larne players still limping you can see a really tough battle out there tonight but I'm sure this trophy being presented to say to Jack Hastings will go some way to easing that pain. Here is Wayne Glenn presenting that trophy to Jack Hastings. who will lift the trophy with his teammates in front of those Lauren fans. And there you are, Lauren under 18s, the 2024 Harry Cavan Youth Cup final champions thank you very much ladies and gentlemen for joining us here this evening it was a thoroughly enjoyable final hope you enjoyed it as much as we did here i've been mark strange thanks for joining me here this evening take care